Hello and welcome back. Apologies for the delay. We're just finding the right server for all these players. But we are now onto the server and just about ready to jump live. I met us joined by Risk and it's going to be Mouse Sports against Penta on Mirage. And of course, because this was Penta's choice of map, Mouse Sports is starting CT. How are you doing, man? Yeah, I'm doing pretty well. I'm looking forward to see how Penta is going to take this one because we had the discussion in, in, in the picks and vans that Penna were probably going to go and pick Cash instead of Mirage because of their bad track record on this map. But then again, they, they picked uh, Mirage, so they can, they're in for, for a good match here because they're playing against a great team on this one. So despite them not really getting much out of this, since they already have failed to qualify, but they're not out of the division yet, so they're not going to play in relegation, they're going to get a good amount of practice against the best team in Germany right now. Yeah, and I do wonder how much of that factors into their choice of Mirage if they just want to try and practice this and run some strats that they've got in their back pocket. But regardless, as you can see, just about a minute left on the time. Neither team is really forced in and done too much. Here we go, some smokes and flashes and such are coming up from Penta Sports on towards the A site. Dennis up on the CT boxes, jumps up, you can see a few players, Ooh. does connect the shot onto Tabson. That's going to be very nicely done for him, but the bomb gets planted regardless in the smoke. And now the retake potentially in effect. Not if Stavi has something to say about it with two quick fire frags with the Glock. Very nicely done. But he should be falling down. It was a bit of a laboured attempt from Nex, but finally gets his man. And now there's three on three. This is going to be a tough one for Mouse Sports to lock down. I've got a feel here, Risk. Yeah, especially like Strux with three HP still alive here in an angle here. So technically it's a 3v3 and he's actually going to get a frag here only with three HP. So surely if they don't stick this defuse, they're actually going to oh, almost stick it. Strux saving the team here, 3 HP, getting 2 kills, killing the Diffuser as well, huge round from him. <laughs> They'll just blow up at the end, but they'll definitely <laughs> take that. Nicely held from Penta Sports. And I was thinking, you know, up until Staffy dropped the double kill with the Glock there in quick succession, this probably should be Mouse Sports. Yeah. I think it was Dennis who broke the deadlock with the first headshot. I'm like, cool, Mouse Sports are probably going to hold on to this, they're going to retake, they're going to get the bomb defused, it's all good for them. Nope, Penta Sports are locking it down. And now they are going to have themselves with three MP7s, a Mac. I need to say a Mac 10 again there. Mac 10. I keep saying that. I'm like, I really want to see a Mac 10 in this game. It's not going to happen, <laughs> Vince. Stop, stop the dream. The dream's dead. Mouse Wars, though, they've gone for a force bite. The Scout, five sevens, P250 thrown in the mix. And of course, they're more than good enough to make this one work for themselves. But again, it's going to be a force onto A. Flashbangs and smokes coming on through Stavey with the. Well, the SMG is about to say gets himself completely decimated from Chris J, who's just lurking back on jungle with the scout, lands the headshot, and now it's going to be the 5 7s coming into fruition. They're picking up kills. That's a beautiful flashbang from Mouse, but they're unable to connect the dots. There we go, Nex and God B finally get the kill. It's all on Crystal. He's been spotted in Sandwich, and he gets picked off. And Mouse Sports, not only do they take the round here, is they keep three weapons as well. Yeah, that was a great play, and... And once again, I think Penna kind of underestimated the effect that, that a force buy on the CT side can have. Because if you get that scout in, if you get that first frag, you can play those 5.7s. You can get the real flashbangs in. And close range with the 5.7s, that is just a deadly weapon. And it doesn't matter if you have a max. And if you're flashed and a 5.7 comes running in, you're just dead. And that's just how it is. So great round by Mouse to get it back. And, and Chris J uh, doing good work here with scout, having that into this round as well. So surely going to do some damage here. Yeah, very nearly got himself into a position to get some shots off there. But saw a player jumping to the left and then back on again. Dennis is going to get that first frag, but pushing up aggressively with the M4. He gets punished. Chris J still in window. There's no reason for him to have moved. No smoke has landed and forced him to relocate. Rings out with the shot and there's next as well. So this should be easy peasy for Mouse Sports. They've lost one player. They desperately don't want to lose another because Penta, they haven't gone for any armor. So if they can get another frag, it'd actually be a pretty solid round for them on just pretty much P250s. Yeah. Let's see here. Strux or Struxy taken out. So no further kills from him. And um, well, almost a clean round for Mouse, but it's going to be up 2-1. to one. And let's have a look at the money on Penta. So yeah, 4-8 on Crystal. The lowest player on 3-4. So. And they're probably going to go for another eco. Oh, actually, as I say that, the force buy comes out. I was kind of wondering if they're going to go for that force buy, but then they waited almost too long and just in the late thir three seconds of that buy time, they decided to go for it. So they have two Galils and lacking a big amount of smokes and flashbangs, but they're also going to catch two MP7s off guard. They are hoping to connect some shots, but they're going to lose the first player. And it's Tamsin as well, one of those players that 
we thought may step up to the plate for Penta today. And so far, it's not really been happening for him. However, they do get a frag back as next jumps up to try and get some information. And out through the smoke cloud comes Mouse. Well, Penta, I should say. The Mouse Sports now have to try and retake this side. It has been planted on. But when you look at the weapons and the grenades that are for Mouse Sports, you expect them to retake this for sure. And they go a one on one trade. Crisby answers back, but he's been dropped. But Crystal does come back as well. So maybe this is on for Penta, especially as Stavey from B Apps does huge work with the AK 47. And now Chris J only has a flashbang to his name. He's going to be faking this one out, trying to draw out Penta, but he's going to eat the grenade. But Stavey gets the headshot beforehand. And Penta, you know, I thought Mouse Sports had that in the bag. Very nicely yeah. done there, Hel holding off the retake. Yeah, again, that intro kill and then Stavio or Stavros holding it down from that position. Just he, He's just one of these players that has been... He, he's been in the scene in the German Fusion for quite a while. He was also in there in the CSORS era. So he's been playing with a lot of these players for a long time. And he's just, yeah, been good ever since I, I remember seeing his name come out at first. So good round from Penta there to bring it back. Now it's 2-2-2. Two, two, two. So these two teams, hard to, uh, to separate them right now. Yep, and this is a pretty good start from Penta as well. Of course, you're expecting uh, CTs to probably get more rounds here. But it, I think Mirage is one of those maps as well, Risk. I'm not sure if you'd agree or not, but I think this is deceptively even. A good T side yeah. can still rack up a lot of rounds. Yeah, it also depends a lot on, on how the teams like to play. Um, some teams like to have a lot uh, of, of uh, focus on the CT side. Some likes to have a lot on the T side, TSM, or at least the... The early TSM team was a good example of this way. They had the perfect CT side on almost every map and the T side. Okay, I think uh, he just dropped again off Skype, so we're going to carry on with the action and hopefully he rejoins us very soon. But I think what he was saying is that some teams do prefer the T side. They can really exploit the weaknesses on that CT. And some uh, just generally do a much better job on the CT side. Some outsports now on Dust2, for example, they've got a very strong CT and T side. Let's see if it comes to fruition for them here. Spiddy, with just the P250, because we've had this yo-yo uh, effect of economy between the two teams of winning and losing Ecos, it's going to be, yet again, a very even start. A trade apiece. Dennis gets a frag before dropping. There's Strux this time to pick up the pieces. On to Chris J. He's not going to play any further role in this fifth round. 15 seconds to play with. Penta are cutting this very fine. That bomb is just about to get planted, or is it? No, it's not. Next comes in with the shot. Eight seconds now. If they can just stop this planter, this should be Mouse Sports picking up round five and getting three on the board. Next lands another warp shot, and Gobby seals the deal onto Crystal. Very nice retake. And Mouse Sports will take the defuse as well and take it to a 3 2 scenario. And so, well, the game of economy continues. And Penta, they did get that bomb planted. But you can see their economy is nothing too fantastic. Just 4,000 on Crisby. The rest of the team coming up with about 2.8 to 3k. They do know that if they were to crack this round, that Mouse Sports would probably be back onto a force by Eco themselves. But it's definitely not worth the risk. Penta Sports, if they were to lose this after forcing, are probably looking at a 5-2, potentially even a 6-2 deficit. So, slow and steady wins the race. And Penta are just going to, to hold off on the trigger this round and just go for a smoke, a flash and a grenade on Crispy. So maybe a set play on towards B is what they have in mind. You can see here that Snavy took the, uh, the point and gets a grenade in the face for his troubles. So he's down to 60. So let's, let's have a quick look how this one pans out for Penta as they are losing players and losing a lot of hit points as well. Strux and Stavey both down to just below 50% of their HP. Gobby is trying to ring out onto mid. Tabson is pretty low, but he's not been finished off just yet. 55 seconds to play with, so there's enough time for Penta. And you can see there as well that Chris J and Dennis are both very, very low on HP. So this is doable. And Dennis has just put, been put six foot under. So, Spiddy, what can you do from this position? He's got the first frag, another two to his left and his right. There's the second. He looks for the third, but can't do much with it. Tampson with the P250 headshot. 33 seconds now. But more importantly, I suppose for Penters, they have an AK in play, which they could potentially keep if Tampson can get himself a frag. Ooh, Chris J misses that shot. Bit of a misplay. You can expect him to land that every day of the week, but it doesn't matter because Nex, who was the hero just a couple rounds previously, seals it, and Mouse Sports pick up their fourth round on the board. 4-2 to two now. 
yeah hopefully um my internet connection is a bit more stable now hopefully you can hear me again mm -hmm. uh, yep. i'm not quite sure what's going on here um but uh yeah uh, i missed the most of that round but the last part of it looked pretty solid for mob sports that one of the things i'm really good at is is holding down a bomb side or holding down uh, a situation where they have the advantage because they just know exactly how to play those plays and they have players who are able to take the duels if they have the correct angles and win them 90 percent of the time so right now it's a full bite tapped and already low on hp so this is this is going to be a pretty interesting one here if penta can get the third yeah this it's it definitely possible but the fact that Thompson is so low and mouse sports haven't really been taken out of position just yet it's, it's looking good for him the early signs are good however we've seen how CS can quickly change directions just when you think one team is starting to get the upper hand, the other bounces back. They have repelled the B attack for now. Penta Sports on the retreat. They were trying to feel out the site for a little bit there, but all they met was grenades and a few shots and flashes as well. So it looks like they're going to be rotating towards A here at risk, and they're going to be walking into three players potentially, so I'm not sure this is the right call. Of course, they don't yeah. know this. <laughs> yeah, we have the uh, the advantage of, of the Observer here, Hurricane, showing us all the goodies here. Also, one of the things that, that is a big problem for them is that they're going to run into Chris J in a defensive position with the op, so they definitely have to smoke him off. He's going to be the, the main problem they're going to have here, try and get into this bomb site. Yeah, definitely completely agree with you and they haven't left themselves a lot of time either so a couple of these shots land and it could be lights out however there's beautiful smoke placement from penta that's completely screening away chris jake does get the frag through the smoke he's looking for a second one tries to get it through the box can't connect on the first time of asking oh, and now it's just him and gob b i say that but gob b's been dropped so chris b spamming through the smoke smart play from him realizing that's where chris j was shooting from previously Gets the kill, and even though Tapson was dropped to 1 HP within, what, 15, 20 seconds of the round, Penta still win it comfortably. Yeah, and also, uh, as I said, like, they had to smoke off Chris J. He only got one kill, and actually even threw a smoke. The smokes were just perfect for uh, for Penta there, so great play by them, knowing exactly what they're up against, and now Crystal picking up the AWP. So this is going to be interesting, because now, well, he's not going to be up against an AWP, but he's going to have that AWP in this round, and then in the next one, or whenever Chris J decides to buy one again, that's going to be that battle. Surely this one is going to be pretty easy for Penta. It's, it's only Chris J who has a real opportunity of doing anything here, and he's probably going to save. Yeah, he wants to just keep that M4 rolling forward into round number nine, because this looks like it's going to be Penta all day long. God B, though, with the P250 can certainly do some damage. The fact that bomb is planted definitely lowers that already very low percentage. Chris B on firebox structs up towards Palace. they got... Three players in Ramp and Tetris, respectively. And now Sports, I mean, they, they don't have a hope to clutch this round. So I think they're looking for exit frags at this point. They're just hoping yeah. that a couple T's go looking for the M4 that Chris J had. They can get themselves another couple cheeky weapons to play forward with. Mm, yeah, that's what's going to happen. But God be realizing that no one's coming towards him. He just backs away. But importantly, I suppose, for Mouse Sports, they do keep an M4 and some Kevlar going through to yeah. the next round, and that, that could give them a chance. Yeah, this is this is pretty much a chance of getting anything out of this round because it's going to be another pistol for the remaining part of the team, apart from Chris J. So, yeah, maybe they want to run, run something like Chris J playing very defensively alone on B, and then the rest of the team stacking that A bomb side. That will at least be, be my, my idea to them. But let's see here what they're going to do. Actually, they're just going to play a, a pretty standard 2-3 split with no one in middle, and... One guy watching from connector, and that's going to be Dennis in that connector, and Chris J watching over middle as well. So switched a little bit around. The rest of the team going up to A, so that A stack might not have been a bad idea. But now they kind of caught off guard. Chris J is rotating in, and he's here with the M4, and he's going to be the one they're looking for to make the difference. But right now he's pretty much flashed off. Trying to move in towards the bomb site. He taps in here, spraying away. And Chris J shut down, so this is pretty much the round, unless Mouthwatch can come up with something crazy out of these pistols. They do have a Deagle. I was going to say a Deagle and a 5.7, but Spitty gets dropped, and well, next follows suit. So Penta, on T side, a 5.4 to the good against Mouse Sports. That was an eco, it was with the M4 and a few upgraded pistols, so this is going to be another test for Penta. But so far, so good for them. They've definitely been locking off some pretty strong set plays onto the likes of A. They've tried to poke and probe through B, but I'd say A has been their their key to victory thus far, Risk, yeah. and maybe that's going to be in the back of Mouse Sports' mind as well going forward here. 
Yeah, now we do see Penta looking up for something that that's maybe be a B push here. So this could be playing a bit with the minds of Mouseports, seeing that Penta went A so many times, and now Mouseports maybe gonna overcommit a bit to the A bomb side. So and then going for a split B would be the optimal choice. Crystal in middle just going for the flex shot there. Chris J not with an AWP this round. He's only with an M4 sitting very aggressively in connector, but it's only Crystal who has a real chance of peaking him, and he's not gonna do that with an AWP. Oh, nice game sense by Chris J. Turns out, gets that first one, goes for the reload. Two frags already, two for one trade. Great from Chris J. And that's going to be the start that Mouseports hope for here. Yeah, they've got to keep this going forward, though, Spitty. In a good position on Tetris, does get the better of Chris B, and that's going to put Penta on the back foot a tiny bit. They still have Tampson and Strux in play. Grenades are plenty. Well, fire going towards Firebox for a reason. And that's not going to get the frag, but meanwhile, Tamson's woes continue because his teammate's just been took down, and so is he. Uh, Mouse Sports, well, it's a pretty clinical finish. Just the one frag in exchange for Penta, they'll definitely take that mouse. It allows them to build up some economy, which they desperately needed. But you can see the Penta already have loads themselves, so they're happy enough to just rebuy. Also very close for actually Penta to get more than just that one kill. They had Gob on 1 HP and Dennis on 14, so... A bit turn of, a, a small turn of block in the early parts of this round, and, and that would have been completely different. But then again, we do have the buy up once more, and Crystal yet again with the AWP. So, an AWP advantage on the T side compared to the CT side. Chris J is still without his favorite gun. That's a good point, and Chris J can do crazy things. I mean, we did see as well on the M4 and Connector doing work with two frags, but he yeah. definitely preferred to have the AWP. Meanwhile, as I'm speaking, a 1 4 trade, Spitty and Crispy both get themselves frags in Palace. And that all important information will be called to the rest of the C2s who are quickly maneuvering their way in through window and connector. There's Chris J finding the gap in the smoke, wow. doing work, turns his attention to Crystal. But the frag grenade finishes him off. Great work here from our sports, but it's still not over. Tabson, 100% of his HP, moving on to site, and Crispy with the bomb behind him in Palace, smoking off CT side. This should be Mouse Sports, but I've already said that a couple times today, and they've let these rounds slip. Crispy's very low, though, on Firebox. What do you reckon? Can they pull this off? It would be, it'd be a ridiculous round if Penta win from this position. Yeah, they need one more frag to get that bomb down. Planning it now would be a big, big risk. And there we go, Penta taps and getting that one frag. And now the bomb could actually go down. They know they have a player in CT, but the, the last player is not known. That's Chris J coming in from ramp, and he's just going to take the frag there. And that's, that's surely the round, because they did not expect Chris J to rotate all the way around, go up terrace ramp, and then just... Get the kill onto the bomb. Taps in now. Pretty much Tom Cruise in Mission Impossible because it is pretty much a mission that is impossible. 1v2 in a situation like this, not going to happen. Yeah, with such low HP when the bomb was down as well, I think on Firebox. I'm not entirely sure, yeah. but I think Crispy dropped it. So it's just a uh, terrible, terrible situation to be in. I think he was, would have been happy with the 1-4 trade at the end. Didn't happen. And now Mouse Sports have their sixth round and also have their AWP back onto Chris J, who's going to be running into window with it as he does so often. As so many AWPers do, in fairness. Just go yeah. to window, peek out mid, get some information, lock that down for your team. And you can see that no one from Penta wants to even try and go up against him. They're happy enough just funneling out towards B. They've got the lurker of Crispy hiding in towards Palace in case any CTs go looking for information. So it's a good setup from Penta to start off with, but... It's been the last sort of 30 seconds that have maybe been the Achilles heel of Mouse Sports and Penta know that. So they're just biding their time, waiting for all these yeah. utilities to be expended. really like the way that Penta are playing this one because, as you said, they know that Chris J now is in mid. And they know that they have to neutralize him. So not challenging him is the first part. And then throwing the smokes and flashes that will neutralize him when they're into his side is the second part. We're going to have to see if, if they can do both of those things in this round. Um, the first one is, is definitely already filled out, and now Stavio or Stavros coming in with a frag onto Garpy. Chris J now. Well, he has a bit of a mission here. Has to lock it down from jungle. Really tough position for him to hold off because there's smoke around him. He can't really see anything. He knows his team's two players behind, but Spitty answers back with the frag onto Crispy. Here comes the retaliation push in from the T's who haven't left themselves enough time to go to B, so it's definitely going to be an A stack. The problem is that Spitty gets flashbanged, turns around, and when he comes out of the flash, he's dead. He's six foot under. He has been eviscerated. Chris J with York coming in close, gets the first kill, and the second as well. He's down to 15 HP. It's going to be really tough, but he gets a third. 
And now suddenly for a four on two, it's gone down to a two on one. Stabby's in close proximity, but that smoke is going to probably put him off. And Chris J just goes for the defuse. However, his teammates <gasps> failed. And Stabby comes back with the double. And for all of Chris J's brilliance, it doesn't matter. Pent to pick up the round regardless. Sick clutch from Stavros as well. Again, that 3k with a very, very limited amount of health. He actually went for that first aim battle and lost a lot of his health. And then 101 versus Chris J while Chris J was on the bomb. I'm not sure if he was just spamming randomly or he actually heard Chris J committing to the defuse. I, I would like to think that he heard him and then just going for that easy peasy burst there, getting the frag. And well, Chris J actually missing here. Wow, to an AK. Uh, that just goes to show in a nutshell, Chris J, he, he's so frustrating at, as a, like a spectator because he pulls off sick three-man plays and then the next round misses two shots and gets killed from an AK. <laughs> it's just like, what? I don't even understand. But that puts Mouse Sports in a really bad position as well. They're a player down. You can see they're forced up with a couple five sevens. So Penta, they know. They can smell that blood in the water right now. They are looking to pounce. Yeah, let's see. Next at his usual position very defensively and he jumps and well reveals himself but he actually gets a frag and he can hold it down he double frag from him and that's a great hold from next here once again one of the reasons why he is one of the better players in that mouse sports team Gopi now joining him on the bomb side the tactical mastermind behind mouse sports the question is penta do they want to rotate now or do they want to commit to the speed bomb site? They know there's at least one player with an AK. They're not sure, but there's probably also a second one. So the odds are not going to be in their favor. Problem is the time as well, though, with 25 yeah. seconds. They so, should have rotated earlier if they wanted to, but yeah. now there's just no time. Completely agree with you. What they've done typically is rotate very quickly, but this time they were caught in two mines. You can see they just lambs to the slaughter. Gov B gets one. Fair enough, he gets traded out, but he did significant damage to Crystal. And there's only eight seconds to play with, so it really is force onto the site or bust. And, well, they do force onto the site and it's bust anyway. House wins and Mouse Sports take the advantage once more. But all things considered, yes, Penta are going to be on, I assume, an eco. I don't see them force buying here. But you, on an eco, but they've still got six rounds on T side yeah. and there's, there's still a couple more coming up. So this has been a really solid T half for Penta Sports. Yeah, definitely. But it seems like Mouse Sports are finally getting into their gear. Apart from Chris J, he just had that last miss in the, in the last round. But the rest of, of the team seems like they're finally starting up. And the first round's just them just warming up here. But still, everything um, yet to be played almost. Penta on an eco here, so not expecting too much. But in the next round, they'll surely be able to buy up. So it's going to be 7-7 seven to seven with the last round being a buy round for both teams. And everything to play for. It's very, very true. That is, of course, the last pent to pull off something ridiculous here in this round and maybe uh, upset their German counterparts. Except, well, Chris J is not German, he's Dutch, and he's got the first frag. But Strux just jumps on through, and the fact they've got a bomb plant is pretty significant as well. It allows them to buy up that little bit better going forward, and they may even still clutch this round out because they've now got an AWP in their hands on Strux. The flashes are coming in, they're flying left, right, and center. Mouse Sports have somewhat regained this site now and should be defusing that bomb. Strux, well, misses a couple shots. That is going to be all she wrote for round number 14. Mouse Sports take it and only lose one player. But that bomb plant is going to allow Penta Sports to potentially get themselves an orb. Let's have a look at their economy as we go through here. Mm, it'll be a glass cannon orb, so I'll be expecting. Oh, Crystal goes for it. Yep. Wow, okay. Let's see here, Crystal, an AWP and no armor, usually also, as you said, called a glass cannon. Actually also goes for the decoy grenade, not sure what, what, what use that's going to be, but still, it's going to be interesting to see if he can do some damage with that. Um, definitely has to win the AWP duel, because if he gets in close range with any of these CTs, he's, he's dead in the water, so... Yeah, he has to, has to win the battle against Chris J, which is a big, big problem, because not many come out alive from taking that battle. Very true. Many have tried, many have failed. Yeah. But as you say, that's pretty much his... Uh, well, I was about to say that's his mission, but Tabson beats him to the punch. He's going to collect that bounty on the head of Chris J. And now Mouse Sports is just trying to hold on fast. It is Dennis and Connector gets the first kill onto Tabson as he runs through. Penta are up pretty low, but they've got that bomb planted again. This has been a consistent feature of this matchup thus far on Mirage. The A has been planted on a bunch of times, and the retake was too good from CTs. Two of these guys extremely low, but Crispy 
Picks off Dennis. Spitty returns fire. God B's been dropped. Or I should say drops Crisby and now it's on Struck, Susan Palace. They may very well assume this is the position because they've got frags elsewhere. Yeah. This would be the logical choice. They're going for that defuse and they're going to get it. Strux waited a bit too long. He's a bit too far away. 9-6 the scoreline. But this is still anybody's match, I've got to say, on, on Mirage. Yeah. That, that isn't a blowout performance for either team. That's about what you'd expect. Yeah, one thing to note as well is that um, this is going to sound really weird, but Chris J has not won, lost an all battle, but that is because there hasn't been any all battles. He's lost a lot of rounds against AKs nonetheless. So Chris J not looking perfect. Um, I have to say, losing a lot of rounds out, uh, trying to play stationary opera against an AK, which is not something you want to do, even if you're an, an opera on a lower level. An opera on Chris J's level is not expected to lose those. So, yeah, he, he's not having the best game of his life. But then again, the rounds where he's not playing the op, he's actually doing okay, and that's why his score is currently 13 to 10. So, maybe Chris J, this is going to sound weird, but maybe Chris J should, should play a bit more with the AK in his second half, which sounds ludicrous, I know, but. Yeah, it's not been looking perfect on the op. I could definitely see where you're coming from. Um, he's He's been poked out. I think it was Crystal who wasn't running with an op. He's running with an AK. It's, it's after Chris J pulled off that sick three man and then he yeah, missed two exactly. shots and got killed. So I can definitely see where you're coming from. I mean, to be honest, though, although I can see your logic, I think Chris J is going to run with an op anyway because he always does. It's yeah. like it's his go to weapon, it's his bread and butter. So I think you would have to, uh, well, you'd have to pry that op out of his uh, cold, dead hands, really. Yeah. So Mouse Sports now going to be on the roll reversal on yeah. the T side. What do you reckon? What what kind of strats are we going to see here from Mouse Sports? Yeah, actually, to to put a bit more of an end to that statement about Chris J, I think he's also more of a of a T of a T opera where he can kind of roam and pull out some some crazy reaction shots, which you do more of uh, as a T player, which is really hard, and that's why you have those dedicated operas and those are the only ones that can really pull it off. Chris Chase one of those guys, so I actually, I actually think that he's going to go for the op a lot and they're going to work off him and then also for some set strat, set pushes maybe. Um, Wall of Smokes on A, maybe go for some short uh, short pushing with the control in middle. So yeah, I, I hope they're going to take advantage of Chris J and, and, and the aim that they have available on mouse boards. So yeah, mid control is also going to be, be a huge factor. Oh yeah, definitely agree with you on that one, Mirage. Of course, mid is such a huge integral part. As it is in a lot of maps, to be fair. I'm thinking yeah. of Cash, I'm thinking of Dust 2. We're going to see Dust 2 coming up later. These are maps where mid control can mean pretty much everything. So, Mouse Sports now on the T side with the pistols. Running with Nex, the only player in underpass that has drawn out a couple players. But the problem is, because he's died, and Mouse Sports are in no position to push on A, they're not going to get any of the rewards out of that death. So that's pretty much a, a free death just given away. Yeah. And Penta Sports now on the site are like, cool, we just have to wait. We just have to bide our time. Four players stacked around mid. The thing is, though, if you're looking at retake potential, that's an ideal position to be in from CTs. You allow that bomb to go down, they just all run in together with the USPs and get the headshots. So this is interesting now. Crispy is rotating to CT spawn at the exact time where the terrorists are running in towards the bomb side, They have those smokes down and therefore they can get the bomb down with no additional deaths. They have two players in CT spawn at the moment, which is going to mean a huge deal because Chris J has not been spotted. He's at that corner. I think I think they had a second player down there. Now they might be able... Oh, the pop flash comes in and they might be able to secure double kill here. Dennis gets both of those with taps and replies instantly with a double of his. A triple of his. Oh my god, taps and just exploding. He's on the fourth frag this round. Will finally be killed. And now it's all on Chris J. And he's going to do a good job here as well in that 1v1 with the USPS going for it against Struxy. Oh, he's going to get it. Chris J with the triple after a quad kill from Tabson. What a pistol round. And not to blow my own uh, trumpet here, I've got both of them in my Vulcan team. <laughs> Hashing in. <laughs> Tabson, oh, well. Tabson's such a good pistol. Uh, yeah. This is something that me and Helium have discussed a lot in the past. Whenever we cast Penta, like this guy in pistol rounds, you're expecting him to get three or four frags. That was insane. And then Chris J just saying, whatever you can do, mate, I can do just as well. Gets the clutch, gets mouse sports, that all important pistol round and their 10th round on the board, which of course is going to translate into some AKs and SMGs moving forward. Tabs is in a pretty good place to do some damage, but he's going to eat a grenade. No, it did no damage to him. Hello? Yeah. <laughs> we all have all our steps. Brilliant. So. He said 75 on, on Stavros as well is going to be very important if they want to get anything out of this round, in my opinion. And actually, Tapson, as we talked about, very good pistol player, picks up one onto Nex, and now has the MAC-10 as well. So, 
Tapson probably going to be the key player. As we see a split B coming in here, that mid control evolving into a short push. And Stavros is on the back of this bomb side. Perfect position. I would not have him peeking here, but let's see how oh, he's going to be taken out by Spitty. But a couple of frags coming in from our sports, and this will be over very soon. Yeah, this should be over very soon. But Dapson again gets another frag, and it's going to be traded out from Dennis. And, well, Dennis runs out of ammunition. That was a bit awkward. Crispy's yeah. still alive. Only 16 HP to his name, however. And with that bomb planted, I think he's going to go looking for... Well, is he going to go for exit frags here? Or is he looking for a weapon? Yeah, I think it could be both. I'm not really sure what he want to do here in T-Spawn. Oh, oh he got, has the head armor. That's so Kevlar. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, you want to save that $1,000. No point throwing it away, so... He does have a fair bit to uh, to play with, and I can understand. He's got 16 HP and retaking on B site. And it's not going to happen. Didn't even have a defuse kit, no grenades, nothing. No. Yeah, really big mistake. Um, that player who ran out of bullets with the AK. Don't really remember who. Dennis, um, I believe. Maybe Dennis. Yeah. <laughs> that's just that's just straight up losing a weapon on a round like that. Even though they picked it up, but still, you you cannot do something a mistake on that in that gra like gravitude in a match like this against a, a team like Penta. So. That was that was pretty stupid of him losing that one, not having uh, control over his ammo. But yeah, eleven to six, still in the favor of Mouse Sports. The favorites looking good on this one, even though this is the map choice of Penton. We still have DDoS two to come, which is surely the map that Mouse Sports will dominate. Doesn't matter who they play against. So yep. Penta in a, in a rough spot right now. Definitely, and don't they know it as well? They know that Mouse Sports is going to be solid on DDoS two. So this is a almost doubly important map for them. And it, not only do they get that weapon back from Dennis, but the issue is that he lost his Kevlar, he lost some grenades as well, which is quite, you know, it does start to add up, and having to rebuy a weapon on top of that. So Mouse Sports, although they're 11-6 up, although they're looking in prime position, if Penta can win a couple rounds in a row, they'll be back onto Ecos, and then Penta can definitely draw themselves back into this map. It's not over yeah. just yet, but Penta are running out of time, and they know it. Crystal's been dropped first in this round, but he's down to 34, so it's maybe a, a slight silver lining on the dark cloud that looms overhead for Penta Sports. 45 seconds to hold off one, and God, Pete just obliterates Taubson in window. Didn't know what hit him. And now the force in towards a... Chris J gets the frag. There's God, B, and God, B seals the deal with his third. 12 to 6. But Penta will have some weapons moving forward now into the 19th round. Yeah, so let's see here. This is pretty much where Penta make or break. Here Mirage, because if they lose this one, Mars can be in 13 and they're spending all their money right now. So, yeah, it's 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 tough for them if they don't win this one. And also, no head armor, if, as we usually see against AKs, it doesn't matter too much. But then again, they're also lacking in the flash department. Stavros without any flashbangs at all. Yeah, a bit bare bones, isn't it? But as you say, this is such an important round for Penta. Remember that Mouse Sports sat around the third position right now in the Sevo MLG. Pro League standings, so this is a really important matchup for them. Penta, as we've already said, they can't qualify. I don't think they're able to slip into the relegation battle either, so this is kind of a... I wouldn't necessarily say it means nothing to them, but it's a lot more important for our sports, who are coming out all guns yeah. blazing through Connector on T-side. And we're talking about mid being so important. So far, they're just all in mid, pretty much. Barring Spiddy, who's moving through ramp, they have just locked down mid. It's theirs now. They've bought this, and Chris J moving into short. He could get up into ladder and potentially pick off a frag onto Strux. This is pretty huge for Mouse Sports, but they have to still execute this strat. Oh, and Dennis hears Crystal firing through that smoke. Chris J, though, picks up Strux, and they know the position of of Crystal as well. That's why Chris J just spams through that smoke. He heard it. The information is given from Dennis, and Dennis knows exactly what's up, but it's going to be Crystal winning that battle. He sh should not have won that. Uh, since they knew his exact position. Crispy goes down, Chris J takes down taps and now it's all on Crystal and Stavros on that Penta side. It's now Stavros 1v2, Chris J on 4 HP. It's gonna be rough. It's gonna be very rough. Chris J is down on 4 HP, but they have Molotov smoke and a flashbang. Molotov's gonna be expended onto CT side, so they obviously have no idea where Strux, where Stavi, sorry, is right now. And Chris J, the player on very low HP, has been put out of his misery. God B, now because he threw that Molotov, has no utility, but Stavi has no defuse kit. So it really is going to come down to the next few seconds. He's picked one up now, and now it's going to be oh. defusing that site. And God B, he's jumping up on the boxes. He gets completely caught out. Oh yeah. my dear. God, I'm not... get the round. I'm not sure if God B was just having 
problems getting on that top of the box. I actually think he was he was trying to to see if the CT was moving on that bomb side. Just if he was moving yeah. out and faking it, he would go for the shot. But it it looked really bad for Gobby there. So Pence is gonna get the round still alive. But if you have a look at their money and the the weapons they're purchasing, you you can see that their money is not good despite them just winning that one. Three for Masses and no yeah. armor on Strux either. Because of course they win the round, but they lost every player in the process. Yeah. So as you say, they win. But that is also going to reset that round loss bonus. So if they're to lose this, you're looking at a force by slash eco, and things are going to get horribly wrong. But they are getting some frags. Oh, Spinny misses see. his spray. That was really poor play. I'd expect him to do better from that position. And I'm sure he'll be face palming right now. Because Penta, in a very vulnerable state, have got a 2 to 0 lead in this round. And Mouse Sports, although they're getting a lot of real state once again through mid, on short, they did nothing with it last time until the last few moments. So Penta can just breathe a couple of sighs of relief. Tabson gets the frag onto Dennis. That was through Smoker thinking Connector. This is looking good for Penta. They're starting to bounce back here. They should lose the first player. Here we go, Gobby. And he's going to finalize that frag. But he's been spotted from Sight and Tabson ripping in with the AK-47. And just like that, Chris J is all that remains. He does have the bomb though, and he's moving towards B. There is a player up in B apps that struck and well, Chris J gets taken down. Yeah. Nice round from Penta, though. Yeah, great round from Penta. Great round from Tabs, then, as well. Just rotating all over the map, getting that 3k. And now on 16 frags. He's died 16 times as well, but still, he's a, he's a top fragger for his team. On the other side of the scoreboard, Chris J laying well with 20 frags. And you're probably happy since you picked him for your Vulcan team. <laughs> Uh, yes. Racking in some good points there. But 12 to 8 this is the scoreline. Penta Sports with two rounds in a row. We do see that making it all on the economy on Mouse Sports. Spitty only on a P250 while the rest of the team are buying up. Yeah. Well, the thing is, I also picked Spitty, so I don't know. Yeah. I guess I'm even. <laughs> <laughs> I've picked two top fraggers, one of the bottom ones. So who yeah. knows? Either way, though, Mouse Sports find themselves four rounds ahead, but this is hanging by a thread. They've got P250 on Spitty. Dennis is down to 25 HP. They do have an open play on Chris J, but the way that Penta have been playing, I really like. Look at that from Tabs and gets the frag. What I like is that they've, again, respected the prowess of Chris J and then never peeking on CT yeah. side. They're like, cool, you've got an AWP, but we're on CT side. We don't have to peek you ever. And therefore, yeah. Chris J's not getting those sick entry frags that you were talking about with the AWP before. Yeah, Tabs and those stepping up hugely so far in the second half. He's looking so good with a 3k in this round as well. And Crispy locking down his frag for the round also. And now Economy is looking good. Even an AWP picked up by Tabs in here. Dropping that over to Crystal. So, looking good for Penta, even though they're only three rounds behind. It's going to be an eco for Mouse Sports, so surely it's going to be 12 to 10. And if they can win the next buy one, then this, this game is pretty much tied up. Yeah, it's going to get very, very close very quickly. And Penta, who just a few moments prior were on the brink of a potential loss, have pulled three rounds back to back, including that defuse, that 1v1 defuse. And now are on uh, the cusp of potentially taking us into 15 15 territory, even. We've seen a lot of yeah. ties thus far, and a lot of overall ties and talking about a map apiece between these two teams. Mouse have got five ties coming into this game, so it goes to show how close their games have been. Penta haven't been that far behind as well. Chris J misses the AWP shot, which is pretty huge, but there's the return frag from Nex, answering the call of his fallen comrade. Now picks up the AWP, but Penta still have the huge advantage here, surely. They've got three players, all on full HP, all on very good weapons, and Mouse Sports still have a P250 in play. So you'd fancy Penta, but if the T's can push together and get that entry, maybe things can turn back in their favor. Oh. Again, Crispy switches to his flashbang at the worst possible moment, and that cost Strux his life. So for yeah. all me talking about to three on three and Penta have got a great position, if small mistakes like that happen, it simply doesn't matter. That was just, oh, wow. That was just pretty much stupid. And uh, Crispy there switching to his flashbang, and now it's going to be Spitty on the bomb side trying to challenge Crispy, and Crispy goes down to 23 HP. Next, with that, Tech 9 has been doing well so far with it, now sees the position, but he's not that good with the AWP, especially not clones range. Um, not really a guy I would I would have taken those flick shots, and that's the reason he's not going to hit them. He would actually have been better off trying with the Tech 9 there, and that's going to be Stavros picking up the round after, uh, well, some kind of big mistake there from Crispy. Uh, selling his teammate out completely. Penta will get the round though. 
it's not a cheap affair for them. They, they're going to lose some money, but you still, yeah, you see Crispy on 4-5, Stavi on 3k, Crystal on 3k as well, so it's looking okay money-wise for them. Now it's a buy for mouse boss, and this is the dangerous round. Yeah, and you can see that Chris J, because of the economy, well, he could have forced together potentially an AWP. He'd have just been on an AWP and probably no Kevlar, but he prefers the AK, and I, and I like that. Adapting to the playstyle of Penta. Realizing, okay, the AWP's not really working out for me. Let's try the AK instead. Let's go for full grenades and Kevlar now so I can start to do some damage next! Dear me, I thought he was going to fail that completely. He takes 56% of his HP away and really should have been a free frag there. Very comfortable indeed. Strux is in such a good position to strike, but he hasn't opened up through the smoke. Meanwhile, though, he does lock down on Van, gets the kill before being traded out. Mouse Sports, player advantage, player to the good, moving towards B. The bomb's been planted, but Crispy could be the danger man. Flashbang not quite catching on him, he just peeks round the corner. Crispy does get fragged from Spitty, however. And now Mouse Sports in a 3 on 2 are able to lock down this site. Potentially, Crystal gets the. I think that was a tag on Chris J yeah. through the wall. So he's down to 5 HP himself. Towson gets picked off, and Chris J seals it up for Mouse Sports. And that will put the comeback off the rails just for now. And Penta, well, they can force up, but you've got 2.6k on Strux. There's not a lot he's going to be able to play with. And yeah, this is an interesting one. Also, I, f I feel like Penta did not make the best out of that round. They actually also had a player rotating all the way from A, coming through A ramp. But he just, instead of just walking behind the CT players as they rushed through short, he actually decided to fire a few bullets and making them aware of his presence. If he hadn't done that and just have came in with the flank i think that would have been a way different round but yeah those those twitches coming out from from both sides here um crispy actually not both sides mostly on the penta side crispy in the last round and then that round before right now it's dennis though racking up frags quick double from him mouse sports looking like they're on their way to hit their 14th round here it's looking good for them there are still three penta sports players stood in their way however stevie Crisby and Strux all have had their, their moments in the, the sun today. All been performing pretty solidly. Strux, the aforementioned player, has picked up the frag onto Dennis. And that's going to do that round the world of good. However, Bomb is starting to move back in towards A. But look at this. Crisby's coming in from behind oh. on Palace and gets the kill onto Spiddy. That's pretty huge because that's a, that's one route now. The attack the T's wanted to, to be using that's been taken off. The cards and so therefore they're gonna have to funnel in through the bottleneck of ramp but oh. chris j gets the drop onto crispy and doesn't get that shot off that could prove to be the determining factor in this round finally gets it a beautiful no scope but he's gonna get that bomb planted and likely get his life taken from him stavy misses a couple of opportunities chris j is going up again and misses it and stavy clutches the round my goodness though Risk. There's, there's been so many like slight <laughs> mistakes that are starting to cost these teams huge. Yeah, it's it's the minor marginals between these two right now. As we can see in the score, 13 to 11, it's it's very close between these two teams. And we see Chris J top in the scoreboard, 24 to 15. But he's also missing. He, he's going for some crazy shots with the op. Like he's going for so many shots, and he's gonna miss most of them because. It's like the shots are not easy to hit. So even with a player of his caliber, he's going to miss most of those shots. So he landed that no scope. That could have easily been a miss for him as well. And then the round wouldn't have been as interesting. But they get that bomb down, get some money coming up into the next round. So they're going to have a full buy in the next one. They're going to have some money for armor and, and tech nines in this one as well. See Dennis with full full armor and two flashbangs on, on the T team. So question is, can they get something out of this one? Because if they can get the bomb down, then surely Chris Day is going to have money for an AWP in the full buy coming next round. And that's really what they want. They've completely given up the B site. Penta yeah. have just gone Weird. so aggressive through underpass, through short, that fair enough, they're very likely still going to win this round. But that is a bomb plant, as you mentioned, that Mouse Sports will have themselves that could transition and translate into that AWP for Chris J, where he could pick up a couple of frags next round and suddenly things turn back in Mouse Sports' favor. They are retaking this site fairly comfortably and, and confidently, yeah. and I don't see any kills being exchanged. There we go, Penta will win the round. But again, I'm scratching my head a tiny bit there. Yeah. Penta completely vacated B site. That was a weird choice, especially since they know that Mouse Sports is going to be on that eco. So at some point, you should expect them to do something focused on getting a bomb plant. I'm um, not sure if they just like miscalculated how their opponents had their economy, but that, that should be pretty obvious. 
But then again, as we see, Chris J having enough money for the AWP, but not enough money to buy the full setup. He misses the head armor and a bunch of flashbangs, so this is a, an amputated AWP, but still, it's an AWP with Chris J, so it's always dangerous. Very much the case. I was wondering if he had a good spawn for anywhere, and he had a pretty decent one for Palace, but he's not going to be rushing in for the early pick. He's playing this one slow and steady, trying to bide his time. Penta seemingly read the script. They know what's about to come up. Flashes through mid. It's going to stop the push, but look at Chris B. He was in a good position there. Chris J has been dropped, so for all that we're talking about, the bomb plant going into an orbit simply doesn't matter because Penta are locking things down nicely. Dennis, the return frag onto Chris B. But that is a drop in the ocean at this point in the round. However, Mouse Sports are poised to start pushing onto this site. Tamson gets himself a double kill and a third with the Tech 9. And Penta, it's all even once more. And this was looking really bad. What was it, 12-6 at one point? And yeah. now 13-13. Yeah, despite from that one round where Mouse Sports won it, Penta have pretty much been winning, what, three rounds? Uh, actually, seven rounds out of the last eight rounds on the CT side, so... They're looking pretty freaking strong on the CT side. And with the tie scores being tied, 13 to 13, and an Eco phenomenon from our sports, Penta actually looking like they're in the driver's seat of this one, finally, after a long time. This is their map choice, so this is the, the, the map where they should do the most damage, and they have a chance now of getting that one map at least in this best of two. Yeah, that's definitely where it resides right now for Pen to remember that Mouse Sports desperately need this win. They need both map wins. And now Ooh. desperation push coming in. Dennis with a quick fire double with the Tech Knight. There's Nex with a frag as well with the Deagle. And suddenly in the blink of an eye, this round is looking very good for Mouse Sports. They've got an AWP on Chris J, an M4 in the hands of Nex and Mouse Sports somehow just clutch this round I... out. Yeah, I don't know like how Penta they did that. Penta were going to win it every day of the week. That was so weird by Penta. I'm not really exactly going to be able to pinpoint what exactly they did wrong, but there had to be more than one mistake on out of Penta there because, first of all, they should not have that entry, like that easy entry. The nade came in. They actually he, he spotted one guy or two guys in B apartments, put down the smoke as well. So they knew that something was B already there. They should have rotated one player at least to CT spawn, but. Yeah, that, that looks so weird from Penta. I thought they had one, that one in the books. Um, apparently, they did not. And now their money is looking tough because, well, Crispy with one weapon, a FAMAS, and not being able to buy in the next one. No one on his team is actually going to be buy, able to buy in the next one if Mousebots win this. So, yeah, Penta looking, going from a great position to a terrible one. Especially in this round as well because Crystal was trying to push through mid towards T-Spawn B apps area to get some information, comes round the corner and Chris Chase just sat there. He's like, thank you very much. There's a free frag for me. And that's a lot of money has just evaporated from your team. So Penta, now a player behind. And that seesaw of CSGO continues now. The Penta on the back foot, they're against the ropes. Now Sport's in a phenomenal position. It seems that B site definitely does look the weaker of the two from Penta on their defense yeah. side. Definitely. But Mouse Sports opting for the A this time. There are three players stacking around A from Penta, one of which is Tampson, just caught a glimpse of Dennis and converted that into a very comfortable frag in the end. And here comes the push onto A. After that, pick Crispy caught with his pants down from Spiddy. Next, just chime in with a frag, but there's Tampson once again. He's dropped his 29 kills in this round, just one shy of the 30 bomb, and he'll be looking to pick it up in this round here. As he looks through Connector, waiting for his teammates to move into proximity as well, so they can push as a unit. Only one grenade, neither of them have a defuse kit. And in the back yeah. of their mind, they may be thinking about just saving. Yeah, they are saving here. Tapson's going to run away with the AWP. And uh, that, that that's a tough round there, because that's going to put mouse boards on 15. Despite Penta having two weapons here and, of course, AWP and armor and M4 and armor, it's it, I just don't see them doing that. After they threw the round away where Mousebot pushed on B with that e almost eco round, I think they're broken, um, both in money but also, like, psychologically. After losing that round, they're just on tilt mode. Mm -hmm. It's like broken in, in mind and money type scenario, yeah. It yeah. definitely looks like that. And Again, Penta, back to the drawing board for them. It's going to be 5-7. They have to force, of course, because Mouse yeah. Sports are on the brink of winning this first map now. And that's the reason they saved the two weapons, is to play for overtime. And who knows, maybe if Penta get a couple kills here early on this round, if uh, Mouse Sports make mistakes, remember there have been a lot of mistakes from both teams, we could still see the tie coming into effect. 
I personally thought this map would be a close one, and it has definitely delivered. The next map I couldn't say the same for. I think Mouse Sport should have Dust 2 fairly comfortably, so it's added importance to Penta here to yeah. try and cling on to this for dear life. Yeah, and really, really impressed by Chris J here from Mouse Sports. Of course, the top frag. One player that I'm not impressed by in this one has been Crystal. I really thought that he was going to make a bigger difference. He's, he's the off player, but also plays a very, very good AK slash M4. Right now, he's only th sitting on 13 frags. He's actually the lowest fragger and the lowest KDR in the entire server right now. And he's one of those players that can have a really good game and has had good games against top teams like NIP and Fnatic in, in the past. But in this game, he's just not been able to do anything pretty much. Mm. And I thought his CT side would be really solid because the reason we were yeah. talking about before, Chris J on CT was struggling a tiny bit, even got AK'd from Crystal. But as soon as the roles reversed, Chris J seems to have woken up from his slumber. And it's been Tabson that's been having to carry on CT yeah. side. And you can see there the kill spread is ridiculous. Tabson 29, nearest player on his side is Stavi with 18. He's yeah, carrying Tabson. so much of this burden by himself. That's true, and here we go, another B execute from Mouseports. They have three CT players now, and this is the best chance they have, but Dennis getting the first frag in. Tabson sitting on that bomb that he has to come up huge here. Strucks taken out, so it's all on Tabson, but Tabson will go down. And I think that's the game right now with 10 seconds to go. They're going to get the bomb down, surely, but in a 2v4, make that 1v4 from Crystal, the worst player so far in this map. He's, he's just not going to clutch this. It's just over. Mouseports going to take that, and a very important map win. Huge. Here in their, uh... Sivo, Sivo standings. Yep. Huge. Uh, Absolutely mm -hmm. huge. Be ready for those land finals. Of course, they want to get the full match win. Um, with a win on DE does too, but it's a GG here. 16 to 13. Mouse Sports take the victory in map one. And they take it at the end with uh, Penta going down with a bit of a wimp rather than a bang. I thought that would go right down to the wire. I thought that Penta yeah. would maybe even take us to overtime. Not the case. It's somewhat disintegrated for Penta at the end. And Mouse definitely deserving that win. And now we move to Dust 2, where things go from bad to worse, surely. Penta, of course, they're not a terrible side on Dust 2. I think they can hold their own, but they're playing one of the best Dust 2 teams in the world. And that's not even a bold statement. That's just fact. Mouse sports yeah. are that damn good at this map. Yeah, so that's going to be uh, the first map. Mirage going down, of course, to Mouse sports. We're going to have the second one on D Dust 2. Uh, that's going to happen in a little short while. We're going to take a short break, then we're going to be back with Dust 2 between Penta and, of course, Mouse Sports right here on Siva TV. My name is Risk, alongside me is Metas, and we're going to be back after this break.